Hello, welcome back to Bame Farm. Uh, this isn't Bame Farm actually, we're on a away from home adventure today. Uh, took a bit of a drive and a big turn of events. Um, we're buying a Gleaner K Combine. By we, I mean me. And everybody else is here to help pick it up. I believe it's a 1972 model. So it's way older than me and Brad combined, probably. It's getting there. How old would that be? Say 72, 30, 40, be 45 this year. Wow, jeez. Still 17 now. This is recorded, I want to say... This is the beginning of January. Is January. Yeah, yeah. yeah January. This is from January 10th. Um, so we're here uh, loading it. Um, it seemed like a good machine. Um, everything looked functional. The farmer had used it this fall. Um, however, I have done some work to it. And we'll get to that later. Um, now, the fellow we bought this from, he's a bit of a jerky driver, at least it looks jerky. Uh, the clutch is actually very low, so there's a lot of free travel before you ever get to do anything. Um, that's a little difficult on the clutch. It's a gear model, three speed, with the variable uh, speed pulleys. Um, I think the belt is definitely well worn, but it's not coming apart. Uh, so it's, that hasn't made the list of things that it's important to fix yet. Now right now we're trying to load it, uh, at least load the bean head. Uh, we got our nice little block system set up underneath the tires trying to get higher, plus the ground is raised up next to the driveway. Our original wild plan was we're going to put the combine on this trailer, uh, but being a drop deck it's only seven something wide and the combine's eight foot edge to edge. Uh, and right now I'm trying to explain to my cousin and uncle that the head moves on a radial axis. Um, it's not like a self-leveling skid steer bucket. So the point uh, out at the left side there, um, it's not going to come down flat and we're not going to be able to pick it up if it's not propped up on some blocks. So. T Tons of repositioning here. Um, I believe the head is a 12 foot cut. Uh, it's not crazy wide, probably plenty for that combine. It only has a 26 inch cylinder, uh, which is very tiny. I was hoping to find a K2, however, those weren't in my price range. The only reason I want a K2 is because those were more common to have a diesel engine. Uh, Gleaner K's were only offered with a 250 cubic inch six cylinder GM gas, uh, which runs wonderfully when it has good spark plugs in it. That's one of the things we already replaced. We already put new spark plugs in it. Um, well, we only took it out to the field, I don't know, maybe for 10 hours. Eh, but with spark plugs, it's every 50 hours and you got to replace them. The current blend of gas is not formulated for uh, carbureted engines. Everything now is fuel injected and you can inject piss into them and they probably could run thanks to fuel injection. And we are still fiddling with this head. I guess I've explained about how to take it off. Oh, that took forever. See, we've got too many people here. We've got there's my Uncle Jim walking in front. That's me. Um, the farmer we bought it from, he's in the cab. He's just taking direction. And then there's Richard. And somewhere Uncle John will pop by in the... Um, oh, he's wearing navy blue, I think. And too many people wanting direction, but too many people wanting to be in charge. And they're all looking at me like, I'm just handing the guy money. I bought this thing. You guys got to drive it home. So you're loading it how you want it. All you need me for is cash in hand. So it's like having too many chiefs, and then all the chiefs are trying to be followers. What's the Indian word for follower instead of a chief? You got, you got me. I don't know. Well, you guys can look that up. Leave it in a comment. So we're going even faster now, I think, trying to figure out what we're doing with these blocks. Is it close? Is it going to fall off? Is the front tires of the combine are very near the it edge. Just fell, it just fell off. The head? Oh. Yep. oh nope, nope, it's going down. Okay, Uncle Jim got in the way. Then it's off. Uh, what happened there was not very smooth. The head rolled away on us. But it's loaded. It's on. Uh, time for the combine. Go on a trailer.
Now that's a brand new trailer. Uncle Jim just got a new trailer. And what I dislike about this whole situation is the fact that it's fresh wood, nice and smooth, freshly planed, and fresh paint with icy cold snow on tires. Nothing about that situation lends itself to good traction. So I was really afraid things were going to start spinning tires. Luckily they didn't. Oh, we're almost on. I guess it's going smoothly enough. I don't know. I was... That's why I let the farmer drive it up there. <laughs> You've had more experience with this machine than I have. I don't want to wreck it and you just bought it. See, so we're getting a bit close up here. It's, it's a manual fold auger. Leave it out once you get going. One thing I do like is all the galvanization. It doesn't really rust. The galvanization may fade, but it's not going to turn brown and ugly unless it's really sat out a whole bunch in acid rain and just eaten it away. Lovely bright orange rims. They really, they really do stand out. The only thing it needs are rice tires. Kind of let that bit slide. Well, looks like we got the bean head all strapped down. Now the truck is missing. I don't know if you can tell in the back right hand corner, sort of behind everything. We're working on getting the corn head loaded into Richard's truck. It might be already in there. We gotta quick catch that one. Unfortunately our cameraman was busy, um, so we did miss the most important part, the corn head. I'm sure I've voiced it many times, um, but I like corn much more than beans. That's yeah, like a little two row corn head, wide rows. Uh, we plant wide rows, so we gotta harvest wide rows. I really wish I had a three row wide head. Um, with two rows, you're straddling two between the tires, and you have two obviously outside. But the two on the outside, you've only got like six inches of wiggle room between those two other rows with your tires. At least with three rows, those, the rows next to you would be farther away. And with two rows, you have to reuse one rut if you're going back and forth next to your previous pass. That doesn't lend itself to the best handling at times if it's really muddy. At least I wouldn't imagine so. Let's see, so what problems do we know this thing has? We knew that each, the brakes, the individual brakes for each tire, those didn't work. Well, there's no fluid in the reservoirs. Um, that's still something I have to address, is pull up the floor mat, the cylinder, the slave cylinder for each brake is right underneath the floor. Just pull up the mat, pull out the cap, put some fluid in, and see if the lines work. Well, it looks like we got it home. I kind of missed it on that last little bit. Um, that was Brad and Richard's truck, they were following me and Uncle Jim. Now, if you didn't catch it, along the front we had some straps, and those were to hopefully give us some protection against low-hanging power lines. Uh, the combine is just short of 11 foot tall. Not the cab. The cab's tallest point. And that drop deck trailer there is 30 inches. So we are very close to the 13.6 legal height. Limit. We were under it, but there were a few of those phone wires and cable lines that were hanging a little low. Pretty sure everybody still had their you know, connection to whatever service they wanted. Now, right now I'm tasked with the uh, getting this thing off, and I'm figuring out the clutch right now. I gotta figure out the clutch and back this thing down a hill and hopefully not fall off the edge. A little nerve-wracking. Just very, very. Yeah, that's a, oh, oh, I did not. I did not want to do that. <laughs> yes. At least I didn't really it was just holding the brake because I didn't need reverse. I had enough downhill slope on the dovetail to roll me down. We did get lucky, this thing started right up when we got it. Um, the starter sticks, it'll spin, but it won't engage with the ring gear. So I probably need to be looking at a new starter for it. But, 
little couple taps with a hammer handle and typically it'll engage on the next time you try it. Yeah, we got there the farmer, he had he had some terrible issues getting it going. He had to dump some gas down in the carburetor. Hopefully it doesn't have any uh air bubbles or any leaks in the fuel line letting air in. Well, we got the combine off. We've just transitioned back to the bean head again. Unfortunately, there is no corn head footage here. Uh, since the bean head rolled away when we dismounted from the combine, uh, we have to use the bucket loader to get it off. Now, there's not many good lift points here. We're actually woven through the reel and hooking into the frame of the floating cutter bar and the back of it wraps around the bucket and catches on that main box beam that uh, hooks up to the combine. Um, yeah, that There aren't many strong points other than the very back of the corn head. Everything up front um, is situationally strong just because there's a lot of sheet metal there in places but there's no good angle iron to hook to. Um, it's a floating cutter bar, but it is not a robotic float. So you kind of got to watch it. There's a lot of up and down to the float, but the head will not move on its own. Now, a f odd observation. Every single bean head I've seen with the hume reel, like we've got there, they put field tile over the wooden rails that hold the little fingers. This is an odd observation. I've, I've seen them without it, but they've never used anything other than field tile to cover those up. Looks like we did pretty good lo lifting it with the loader tractor. I'm very sure that it weighs more than a ton. I think Brad and Richard were giving it a little bit of a boost on the way up. Uh, we knew that would work uh, because this spring we had some ba large bulk bags of bean seed. And those required a little bit of extra muscle to get them up. So we just applied the same principle. Before we quick wrap up here, a quick list of things we've done. It has new wheel bearings. Put new bearings in the idler sprockets on the corn head. Change the oil. New spark plugs. And the thing will not make a left hand turn to save its life. Um, at one point, the previous owner, he somehow had broken the rear axle off. And he did a lot of welding to patch back, you know, so he did a good job. But when he put the steering arm back on the steering box, yes, this thing has a manual steering, not hydraulic. So up at the cab, the little arm that pivots from the box, I think is off by like one tooth. I mean, this thing will turn right for days. Like, you can pretty well turn the wheels parallel to the rear axle and make a right-hand turn, but you cannot make a left to save its life. Um, so I need to address that still. I think that's most everything. I put a slow-moving vehicle sign on it. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe before we run out of time here.